So this week we installed our AC unit that Pioneer was kind enough to send to us. Yeah, so now we're just going to go through and explain exactly how we installed the unit in our bus. So we started last week by taking out the old AC unit that came with the bus. Starting off the day back under the bus. First project is to take this AC unit down. There's so much more space down here now. You recording me? Uh huh, you recording me? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the AC unit down. Now I just gotta get rid of all these hoses. Last time I did this, it was very dirty, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I got all the hoses out from under the bus. The outdoor unit is out. Now we're gonna go inside and take out the indoor unit. Little messy, huh? Oh man. So the AC that they sent us is the Pioneer 9000 BTU and it is the Inverter Plus Plus, which is the most efficient model and it's a 22 seer. I don't know what 22 seer means, but I just know it's efficient. And it's the most efficient one they sell. We got the 9000 BTU unit because it is the only unit that they have that comes in 110 volt, 120 volt. All the other ones were 230 volts in our inverter in the bus. Um, it, it doesn't do 230 volts. So. so right now we do have it cooling the bus and it is very warm outside. So it is taking a little bit more power. It's taking about 800 watts right now. But like this morning when it was a little bit cooler and we still had the AC on, it was only taking about 250 watts. So and when we only have the fan on and no AC, it's only taking about 80 watts. So it is, it is very efficient and um, we usually on a sunny day like this, we usually take about 600 to 700 watts of solar in. So we should be pretty good in the future. So the first thing I had to do after we took out the old AC unit was start building the bracket that we would use to mount the outdoor unit to the underside of the bus. I welded up this bracket, which is pretty much just angle iron surrounding Excuse me, X. It does hang a little bit low, but it's still higher than the stairs and it's still a lot higher than the exhaust system. So yeah, I'd say this was probably one of the hardest parts of the install, just because we had to weld the bracket up and then up to the bus and it's kind of a pain, but once that was done, everything else was a lot easier. After we got the outdoor unit in and welded up to the bottom of the bus, the next thing we had to do was feed our tubing through. And this was kind of hard just because the tubing is copper and you don't want to crimp it at all. So we were really careful when we were feeding it through. And also since the bus was already finished, it was really hard. We didn't want to go through all the walls and stuff. So unfortunately we did have to go through the dash right here and then kind of up through the windshield or in front of the windshield. Um, but there is already a divide right here on the windshield, so it doesn't really block my view at all, which is nice, but it is just kind of an eyesore, unfortunately. Once we had our tubing ran um, went up through the dash um, and then down the underside of the body to the outdoor unit, once we had all that ran, we were able to install the actual indoor unit itself. And this part was like super easy. It's probably the easiest part just because they give you a nice template to use. And then you just kind of drill your holes and we had to build some, some brackets. But again, if you have an unfinished bus or if you're installing this in your house or anything, it, it would be a lot easier. Once we got the indoor unit installed, we were able to make all our connections 
Um, we made our we made our connections to the indoor unit first, and then we went to the outdoor unit, and then we cut off the excess length and then connected it down there. So the full install took about three days of me working on it after work. Um, so it probably only took eight to 10 hours. So that's exactly how we installed the unit. And now we're just gonna show you exactly how it works. Okay, I am not too familiar with this remote quite yet, but we're getting there. So <laughs> there is multiple modes and there's the eco mode. So this is great when you wanna conserve some energy and it also gets a little bit quieter. Um, we have three different fan speeds. So there's the low, medium, and high. We have found out it works great. The low speed works great when we're sitting on the couch. The medium is great when we're in the kitchen or working at our desks. And then the high fan speed is great when we're in the back of the bus going to bed for the night. So. Um, those have been perfect for our space and there's also this turbo setting. So we got back from having the AC off all day and it's been like 80 degrees out and turned on the turbo for a little bit and it just cooled it down in here almost instantly. It probably took, you know, less than five minutes. It was really fast though because that thing just kicks. We just got back to the bus from being out most of the day and it's pretty warm today. It says that it's 91 degrees in here right now. So I'm gonna turn the AC on and we're gonna see how fast it can cool down in here. What I'm gonna do now is turn it to cool and then put it on turbo mode to try and get it as cool as possible in here. Yep, it is definitely cooling down pretty quick already. And as you can see, on turbo mode, and it's just starting up too, we're taking about about 800 watts of power. It hasn't even really been like five minutes yet, and it's already like pretty comfortable in here. It's already a huge difference. Quick. So it's pretty awesome. There's a swing button, so you can adjust the angle that the air is coming out, depending on where you want it. And there's also this favorite mode, so you can set you can set your own custom mode and like have it as like a pre-saved setting. And there's also this clean button, and we're not sure how that works quite yet, but it's supposed to clean out the filters by itself or something. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a timer, and also a pretty cool feature is you can set a temperature on the remote and then have the AC like follow the remote. So if we have the remote in the back of the bus and it's set at 69, then we can, uh, once it like gets hotter or colder back there, this will automatically, you know, be AC or heat depending on what we need and get us back to that set temperature. So kind of cool, bunch of different features. And so far it has worked amazing for us. So yeah, that's pretty much all the main features of the new AC unit. I do want to say that the auto mode is pretty awesome. Like last night it got down to like mid forties um, and it was on auto. So the, the heat mode automatically kicked in and uh, kept it at like a comfortable 72 degrees in here. And then in the morning when it started to heat up, it turned it automatically to, to cool mode and kept it at that comfortable 72 for us. So Overall, thank you so much to Pioneer for sending us this mini split. It has made the world of a difference already and we've only been running it for a few days now. So mm -hmm. we can't wait to fully test it out more in this hot summer heat once it gets really hot in Illinois. So we'll keep you updated. Also, we still do have one more project to finish, which is to put up our tongue and groove that we had up there before. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's not... It's a little ugly. Yeah, it's a little ugly right now, but um, yeah, once that's done, it will look a lot better, yep. obviously. We got all the wood already pre-cut and conditioned. We did that last week, so mm -hmm. all we gotta do is nail it up there. Yeah. 